And we well, are recording. Gonna... We're already recording. Oh, Lord, so... we are. Then I better get my professional left voice on. Excuse <laughs> me. Let me take a sip of my liquor. And we're back. I got the I got the ass end of that tall boy from yesterday, honey. Uh, <laughs> have it... Miller highlight. Yeah. <laughs> it is the champagne of beers, I would have it's you know. It's the champagne of beers. Yeah. Drift Glass uh, makes a very good barbecued por- pulled pork. I do. And it starts with a cheap cut of pork roast and a beer. And a beer. But a cheap beer. I said to the guy, uh, where's where's your worst beer? And he looked at me like I had insulted his children. And said, Look, <laughs> okay, I came out wrong. I, I do this for a living, so I really should know better. And he <laughs> pointed me over to the tiny corner where the tall boys are, where yeah. the 40s are. And I, yeah. Ah, this brings back memories. Mm-hmm. So I brought back a give you a little paper bag to drink it out of. Yeah. So now I'm legal. Like like they they call it the bootage sack. So, the bootage yeah. sack. Yeah. Exactly. Because yeah. yeah. he drank out of one of those to appear cool with the black folks. Mm-hmm. Very sad. Did not. He, but, he. It really was a Dukakis in the helmet moment. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I came home and offered it to the girls, and you know, yeah. in, in exchange for all of your good grades, here's a forty. And uh... <laughs> they looked at you like. Miller, really? What well, is Miller, this? I thought you said life is too short to drink crap beer. Yeah. And well, you know what? That's that's a quote you can throw in my face all day long. That's so right. I ste- steamed up the pork and made barbecue pork, and it worked out fine. It works out fine. So, but it you gave me a sip of it. It did taste like seltzer with like a beer infusion. Yeah, it's nothing. <laughs> it tastes like literally tastes like nothing. Yeah. And it's for you know you to drink all day long. Yeah. And pee all day beach. long. Yeah. Speaking of P, you can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for July 26th, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live while waiting in line to pee on David Brooks's restaurant food, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hi, Drift Glass. Hi, Blue Gal. <laughs> actually, we now have spies at local restaurants, so we can actually, our network is wide. It is. We can, if David Brooks breaches any of the areas, any of the four corners that we know of, of the restaurant world, uh, we will be able to respond immediately. Uh, because this week we have to welcome back an old sponsor, uh, one of our favorites, Hello Fascist, the at-home meal kit for Republicans, uh, with a new testimonial from a Mr. D. Brooks of Washington, D.C., which goes like this. Waiters hate me because I'm a privileged oaf who use social media to collectively insult their profession for not being sufficiently awestruck by my awesomeness. Now I live in dread that they may be secretly organizing a national day of urine to pee in my food wherever I go. But now... With Hello Fascist, I can stuff my face and insult the working class without fear. Hello Fascist is the at-home meal kit. For Trump administration stooges, Republican enablers, assholes who live in the Beltway media, uh, that provide Americans of that sort with fresh home-cooked meals with no planning, no shopping, and no one calling you out for your moral depravity in public. Hello Fascist, because those people are definitely peeing in your food. All right, let's get started with... What's been going on this week? Right, yeah, dive right into week. it. Slow, slow week, slow <laughs> week, slow <laughs> week, slow week. It it actually. Do you realize that since the last time we podcast, mm-hmm. the new video of Donald Trump and Jeffrey Epstein from 1992, the unearthed video that came out this mm-hmm. week. That seems like yes. a year ago. It's a year ago. People have been saying, "Well, the reason Mueller wasn't." sort of more fireworky is because we're all just so beaten down. No, it's just that no. time is moving at such a crazy, manipulated pace that we don't have time to react to anything before the next no, uh, there's, stupid thing happens. And, and and there's so much flying under the radar. Yeah. That's what scares yeah, the hell me out too. of me, yeah. is that while you and I and every other decent person, we have, uh, we have X amount of bandwidth. And let's face it, we don't have a liberal media. Yep. We have... A couple of little outposts, we don't have the kind of, um, we can't afford an Illinois Policy Institute that we just pay to focus on like three issues and 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 that's it. So we, as amateur journalists or professional pundits or the professional left or whatever you want to call us, pretty much have to focus on everything, mm-hmm. uh, keep track of everything, which is 
daunting considering that there's just two of us and uh <laughs> and and you spend most of your day uh working on crooks and liars and it's it's just um that's what scares me is when i go through the week's headlines below the headlines and see all the incredible long-term carcinoma damage that republicans are doing to this country that will take a generation to clean up that's what really scares me and this week that all came to a head in a weird way Mm -hmm. with the Mueller hearings yes it did that i mentioned to you a couple of times were actually confirmation hearings confirmation bias hearings for sure they they were because they really were going in i just had this very strong feeling that didn't matter. And it wasn't based on nothing. It was based on my entire body of experience watching the Beltway media operate, watching Republicans operate, watching those two, you know, incestuously intertwined institutions discover and and refine their individual party lines to the point where they just never change them no matter what. So I knew Republicans, the script for the Mueller hearing mm-hmm. had already been written a week ago. Mm-hmm. And Republican politicians, elected officials who were talking during those hearings, were doing so to provide plug-in quotes for Fox News to plug into the script that had already been written. Or which they is, were rereading a script that Fox oh, News had provided to them. God, yeah. That, uh, that was just – that was amazing. Yep. Uh, yeah. Not surprising. No. But that Devin Nunez, um, Daily Show. Sean Hannity – Good for Daily Show uh, putting this together. Just, Right. Just line for line repeating what Sean Hannity told him mm-hmm, to say. Mm-hmm. That's how completely um, uh, there's no Republican Party anymore. There's just Fox News in front of the desk and Fox News behind the mm-hmm. desk. That's that's all there is. It's, of that ju- party. it's simply a propaganda machine, right? Yeah, and and a and in not um, and not a benign one. No. Um, no, you know, if you're selling me Twinkies, maybe you can get maybe you can live with yourself. But they're their uh their message is destroying the country looting it for what it's worth turning it over to our foreign enemies uh and laughing all the way to the bank as the rest of us die mm-hmm. or live or live to see our democracy die in front of as us as well as our planet and they, you know and they love yeah. it I, yeah. I don't know what species these fuckers are from i don't know what planet they're they've been sent from to wreck us and then leave but i don't recognize these as my fellow human beings anymore i recognize them as devils who are mm-hmm. sent here uh, but I, but the problem is I know where they came from. They didn't just pop into existence out of nowhere. You and I have been tracking these people for 30 mm-hmm, years, mm-hmm. watching them get worse and more depraved and more desperate and lying and destructive and seditious and on and on. So come the Mueller hearings, it's no surprise that there was going to be a script. It was going to be built by Fox News and hate radio a week in advance. And all they were going to do was plug in the quotes from their employees and stooges. And you and I and the rest of the side of the angels out there we're going to watch the hearings and ignore the fact that robert Mueller is over 70 and hard of hearing and stutters and isn't made for tv Mm -hmm. you know he's Mm -hmm. what gary cooper would have been like in his 90s right um halting and careful with his words but what he said was devastating yes the 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 things that he said and the things that that were built around those words that sort of all right i know you're not going to sit up here and and exposit on what a traitorous scumbag Donald Trump and everyone he associates with is. But is it true that Donald Trump lied to blah, blah? Oh, yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Is it true that he he exhorted others to lie? Yes, that's true. So he got as close to saying that this whole rat bag of criminals needs to be impeached tomorrow as he was ever going to get. And that's what you and I heard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, And we didn't need the pyrotechnics. And then all those noble centrists out there, all the independents, all the middle of the roaders, all of those cowards and timid little schlemiels out there who just don't want to ever take a fucking side on anything because it's bad for business. You know, it's bad for my auto dealership to come out as left or right. So I'm going to go right down the middle. They were looking for someone to tell them that both sides failed, that both sides lost, that somehow everybody fucked but, up. And but it was there just was no a, one in cable news would do that. No, no. It took someone on network news to do that, honey. <laughs> Chuck Todd, Beltway Optician. Right. Uh, paging Chuck Todd, Beltway Optician, or optometrist, if you will. Um, and as someone said on the Twitter, by winning the Dems actually lost is every single Chuck Todd analysis ever. Right, right. And Chuck Todd uh, went on the air saying, well, sure, you know, there's impeachable offenses and crimes were committed. But the optics were so bad. Yeah. 
He wasn't good on television. Terrible. So therefore, right. the fact that he was calling Donald Trump an obstructor of justice with mm-hmm. credible evidence to that effect. Ah, mm-hmm. meh. Yeah. You know. It's not good on TV. Russia attack? No, it, it didn't look good no. on TV. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't make it sing. Right. Um, so it didn't count. And if, again, if Chuck Todd were some goof at the local um, drugstore saying it across the counter, if he were some guy on the bus, uh, you know, expressing his opinion or at the bar, that's fine. Chuck Todd has a position of enormous influence over a great and God-fearing mm-hmm. nation. And his position at NBC slash MSNBC exists to provide the middle with excuses they need not to take mm-hmm. a position on anything. Mm-hmm. That is his whole job. Everyone knows that's his job. Everyone knows that he was hired for. And that is absolutely, there were people um, at the uh, Columbia Journalism Review yes. and other people who, by deflection, by by inference, who said all this talk of optics without talking about him, because if you say shit about Chuck Todd, you never get to go on TV. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, and that's where a lot of people are just angling for that. They they don't want to blow their chance to collect a paycheck from NBC or MSNBC at some future date. So they don't talk shit about Chuck Todd, even though that's exactly what they're doing. But it it was just as depressing and predictable as you would imagine. I was uplifted by the fact that everything that needed to be said is now on the public. Right, right. And can be referenced and cross-referenced and brought up by Jerry Nadler, for example, during an impeachment inquiry, which I believe that's where he's headed. I also think the thing that is being uh, missed, a story that's being missed in terms of the Mueller hearings, is what I call leakage, where the story leaks out to people who never discuss politics, don't want to hear about politics, yeah. don't care about politics. And mm-hmm. uh, for instance, uh, Seth Myers, and again, his, his monologues are very political. But you would watch yes, Seth Meyers not necessarily watching seven hours of the Mueller hearings. You might watch Seth Meyers. Right. Even on YouTube, you might watch Seth Meyers. And he calls Donald Trump a liar constantly. Well, looking at Mueller through the lens of Seth Meyers, you get to see Mueller say, I did not totally exonerate the president. I did not. He What he did was a crime. And right. uh, today, I... No, excuse me. I think it was yesterday on The View, which, again, they do political conversations on The View, but they also have celebrities on. It's a daytime women's talk show. And <laughs> Megan McCain, they actually had the Adam Schiff on. Now, he was in Washington and they're in studio, so it was done on tape. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but Megan McCain thought it would be a good idea to ask Adam Schiff if he had a smoking gun in the Mueller investigation. Right. Right. And Adam yep. Schiff just looked at the camera and said, yep, <laughs> I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Russians offered <laughs> dirt on Hillary Clinton to Don Jr. in writing. And Don Jr. said he'd love it in writing. And that's my right. smoking gun. And, uh, and he did she, elaborate further, but that was it. She didn't know what that to do it. to that. You know, she thought she had a gotcha right. question. I a lot got of it. Republicans seem it. to oh. think they have gotcha question. Did you notice that in the Mueller yeah. hearing? I did. How come you didn't quote Fox more? (laughs) Right. What about Obama and Uranium (laughs) One? What about Hillary's emails? I got you there, didn't I? Now, when when the Gomerts on the right say that, they're not talking to anybody but but the idiots who vote for them and Fox News. They're talking and Donald Trump, who can crush them with by crushing their heads (laughs) by going to their state and saying Louis Gomert is a dirty socialist, liberal socialist, and you should vote him out of office. That's the end of Louis Gomert's career. Now, Gomert's never going to do that because Louis Gomert is. If a anything, pinhead. he's he is um, self preservation. <laughs> you know, oh yeah, all of yeah. all of the Republicans uh, that know that that know Donald Trump has him by the short hairs uh, are going to behave themselves, and, and this, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, and this puts them in this puts all of them in the same uh, cripplingly hilarious existential box that they've been in since right. the beginning. Um, the the apologists for the Republican Party, the people who are just edging for the exits, are trying to figure out a way to say. I don't trust the voters of my party, my fellow elected officials, the president of the United States, the vice president, the attorney general, but the liberals weren't right. And somehow these people, all of them, this this entire block of people aren't really the Republican yeah, Party. Yeah. 
And there's, and this is why we call this the great rebranding. I mean, this is, it is coming people. It, it's Absolutely. actually here. It's, it's arrived. Here. And, and I, I know it because Charlie Pierce out of the blue referenced me <laughs> on did. Twitter when he was saying, I'm, yep, as, as Mr. Electrico has been warning, the great rebranding is here. The great rebranding is coming. And everyone from the never Trumpers to the people who just want to straddle. Yeah. I just want my fucking tax cuts. I don't like the tweets. That's that's been your line yeah, since. Never like the tweeting. The I'm an independent, right? Um, that's that. This is what the future looks well, like. Well, and I think they're going to have a try to have a one-two punch with this, which is mm -hmm. I never liked the deficit. Right. That's Laura Ingram had uh -huh. Lindsey Graham on this week. Yeah. And said, look, I have to hit the president on this. I'm so sorry, Lindsey Graham, but I really have to because, you know, the budget deficit is so terrible. Mm -hmm. And Lindsey Graham looks at her and says, it's OK. You can hit the president on the deficit because you know what? Uh -huh. Barack Obama broke the Pentagon and we have to fix it. <laughs> right. But right. we and this is when this is what I grabbed. And we kept to push this constantly because it's coming, mm -hmm. folks. He said, mm -hmm. we have made promises to Social Security and Medicare that we can't keep. Right. He said that out loud on camera. Yep. Yep, he did. And so he that they're going to say, Donald Trump who? That's going to be number one. Donald Trump who? He's not president anymore, just like they did with Bush. And then they'll say, and we never agreed with Donald Trump on the deficit. That's not a Republican right. value. So right. now we have to do something about the deficit. And you saw Brian Kilmeade. <laughs> Brian oh God, Kilmeade yeah. said, you know, brain trust, yeah. The brain trust said the next president is going to have to do something about the deficit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that I think that I think we now have their roadmap for what rebranding oh, yeah. is going to be. It's going to be about the deficit. Yeah. It's going to be about cutting Social Security, Medicare, uh, as they call it, reforming entitlements. Fuck you. Right. You know, that's right. that's where right. I go with that one. Uh and we were never with Donald Trump with with the budget deficit, right? Which they will not mention was caused by the tax cuts. Well, there's I don't know the they have the name of them, but the, there was a GOP congressman this week who said the majority of Republicans don't want to be defined by Trump supporters. Nice try. And I, I'm just sitting there going, the majority of Republicans are Trump supporters. Right. That's what every single fucking poll says, and and there and and the, this is why. Honestly, if you're not watching, um, I know you're not watching personally, Blue Gal, but I'm watching The Loudest Voice, uh, which is based on The Loudest Voice in the Room, which is the story of Roger Ailes. Right. And it it is so simple. If you have the biggest megaphone, you win. You just shout down everyone else. You just buy your local paper and turn it into a GOP hate machine to destroy your community so you can personally benefit from rezoning and then you just drop it because that's all you ever really wanted. You wanted your personal privilege protected. And as long as Republicans have a bigger microphone than liberals do, we're going to keep losing or we're going to keep fighting for the middle. We're going to keep fighting, just regain the things we lost. As long as there are going to, as long as people are allowed to put Hugh Hewitt back on television, uh, the minute the administrations change and everyone from Chuck Todd to Joe Scarborough starts grilling um, Democratic candidates or the future Democratic president, cross your fingers, my, you know, to your lips to God's ears, um, about the deficit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because this is exactly, this is what happens when you've been doing this for a long time. Every time there's a change in the administration, um, the history is reset. Yep. The previous administration simply ceases to exist. Um, and this week I had a, a, a if small exchange. Wait, if they're Republicans. If they're Republicans. Right. Because. No, no. It, it does. It works both ways. Um, and here's here's what I mean. For eight years, Republicans just shit all over Bill Clinton and impeached him over trivia. Mm -hmm. The minute George Bush was elected, Clinton disappeared. Because because Bush was everything they accused Clinton of being. He he really did have an illegitimate election. Yeah. He really was a criminal. He really did do he 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 blew the Clinton surplus away and, and brought us right back to to deficits again. Gigantic unpaid unpaid for deficits. He did everything that everyone was mad on the right for Clinton allegedly doing. He really did those things. And then and, and the right would not permit any comparison 
with Clinton. Like, well, wait a minute, you just said this and now you're saying that because first of all, 9-11 changed everything, Blue Guy. I don't know if you knew this, but 9-11 changed mm-hmm. everything. And secondly, because that we're just not going to allow any discussion of anything that happened before January of 2000, period. We're just not going to do it. We're not going to allow any discussion of anything that happened during the Clinton administration. George Bush administration shits everything, to, wrecks the deficit, wrecks the economy, lies us into the wrong war, tortures people, da, 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 da. Barack Obama is elected, suddenly George Bush vanishes. Right. He's gone from memory. There's no George Bush. Uh, Donald Trump is elected. The king of the birthers is now elected. The Obama administration is now gone from history. Everything Obama said and did, all the compromise, all the centrist ideals that Barack Obama tried to implement to make David Brooks happy, that the Republican Party blew up, is gone from memory. The thing that happened to me this week was I was I had a, a very friendly exchange with someone on Twitter who's talking about um, – what a shithole Chuck Todd is. And yeah, he is. He's terrible. Chuck Todd is the worst, the worst. He said, and before him, Tim Russert was no prize, da, da, da. And I said, do you remember David Gregory? And the response was, holy shit, I completely forgot about uh-huh. David Gregory. Uh-huh. Because of course you did. David Gregory was a giant slab of stupid between Tim Russert and Chuck Todd, who did two things. His two signature moves were having David Brooks on every goddamn week, just about or reading aloud from a David Brooks column every week and extolling the virtues of the centrism and why won't Barack Obama lead for eight fucking years, or rehabilitating Newt Gingrich's political career every time he took a dump in public. The through line was were the Gingrich rules. There's a set of rules for people like Newt Gingrich where we're never going to hold them accountable right. for anything they say or do in public. We're just going to bring them back on the air, rehab their career, and never ask them any questions about, you know, the, the ground zero right, mosque. Right, right. Or insulting or his racist comments about Obama. We're just going to treat him like a, a favorite uncle and send him mm-hmm. back on his way. And mm-hmm. then putting David Brooks on and reading aloud from David Brooks columns to David Brooks. And then asking David Brooks, what do you think, David Brooks, about your about your own column? I think it's very wise there. And again, never asking David Brooks about the shit he wrote last week or the week before, which always turned out to be wrong. And so that entire part of history just is gone. Is just gone. No one remembers David Gregory. No one remembers the the all the horrors the Republicans unleashed on this country during the Obama administration. Well, that's it's why just, David Gregory got here. a job on CNN this week as the guest yes, substitute did. host of CNN's New Day, and he start he started and what was his hot he take he on started His first <laughs> day on the job, he said. Well, I can uh-huh. see how Republicans could compartmentalize the racism versus sure. the tax cuts and really like the tax right. cuts and, and therefore vote for Donald Trump. Right. And and be resentful that you're lumping us in with those racists right. over there because we're not racist. We're we just, just like, like our, our tax, tax cuts. Cut. So, and, yeah. And everyone just nodding around mm-hmm. the table because like the, – and this is why these people yeah. have jobs. But that's the point. The point is that – as the seams are popping on the Trump mm-hmm. administration, the next iteration of Republican rebranding is going to happen. It's happening right now. This is the building the lifeboats portion right. of our show. And we're going um, to burn Joe the lifeboats. Said, Remember this, folks, right? Yeah. Um, this week, Joe Scarborough said, Jesus, forgive me for ever being a Republican. And you have a you have a, an understanding from all of your religious study, Drift Glass, as to mm-hmm. how Jesus yes. does forgive you. <laughs> He does. Uh, most religious faiths, including the the Baptist faith, I believe that Mr. Scarborough was raised in. Um, I, I, maybe I'm wrong, uh, but there's a certain amount of confession and repentance and atonement, none of which Joe Scarborough is willing to do at all. He just wants to say, oops, I guess I was wrong and move on. He doesn't want to talk about the years he spent. Uh, this is what really does mm-hmm. bother me. Joe Scarborough made $117,000 a week or whatever his mm-hmm. insane salary was, more or less by shitting on people like you and me. Right. I mean, literally, he built his career mocking people like us as stupid and crazy and dumb. Anyone who resisted the Iraq war had Cheetos dust all right. over their underwear and mm-hmm. was, didn't know anything about Iraq. And let mm-hmm. me tell you what's really going on. And oh, Let's have let's have some Republican senator on uh, to talk about how George Bush is going to win the war. The end. Right. Yeah. And now and now it's I guess. Oops. Oops. Well, uh, Donald Trump is certainly awful. 
uh, and somehow the Republican Party turned into this racist dung heap overnight. No. And, and, and so the people who now would like to pretend, would like to continue getting book deals and getting op-ed columns and getting TV time, um, just like they always have, spent 90% of their career making money um, calling people us like us mm-hmm. the devil. Now they're saying, oh, well, well, you know, people make mistakes. Uh, I'd like to continue getting my book deals and and every, all the perks and privilege. I'd like to continue being Bill Crystal, uh, but I'd like to let's let's talk about the future of the Republican Party. <laughs> <laughs> let's not talk about the past. That's a scary place. This is where all the evidence is that I'm a lying asshole who you should never trust. Let's not talk about that. Let's talk about how we can all get along together and unite around certain things. Like a, I should never have to pay for anything I said or did. B, the people who were right all along should never be allowed on television to challenge my opinions. C. Let's just all agree that Donald Trump is the only exclusive problem. And once he's out of the way, somehow yeah. things will return to those good old days of George Bush. And there is no one allowed on the stage to say, stop saying this shit. You're lying. The Bush administration was a fucking disaster and you were thrilled with it. The Obama administration was the model of centrist, cooperative, honorable, honest, decent governance you said you always wanted, Mm -hmm. and you people shit on it every day since day one. How do you think we got Donald Trump? By turning Barack Obama into into the beast, you you gave legitimacy to people who were saying he's not really an American, wasn't even born here, a, a lie which was born and bred and nurtured at Fox News and metastasized by Fox News, um, to great effect. Worked great. Um, This never bothered these people. As long as they could sit on the sidelines and bitch about how awful liberals were and not have to lift a fucking finger, it was all okay. Because it doesn't matter how many, exactly like Brian Kilmeade said, God help me, I never thought I'd say that sentence. (laughs) Um, Because no matter how, this this is deep, the most deeply held conservative principle held by Bill Crystal and David Brooks and Rick Wilson and Tom Nichols, Right across the board. The most deeply held principle is, yeah, I may be an immoral fuck who who lies for a living and get terrible people elected and has never been wrong about anything in my life. But no matter how badly yeah. my people fuck things up, liberals will always come along and clean it up. And that's the dynamic we work with. I get paid a lot of money to get people elected who will destroy the country. And then liberals get people elected who will, who will try to rebuild the country and sweep up the rubble while I, while mm-hmm. I make more money attacking them as socialists and that's the and that whole dynamic has to stop because if the same people who lied to you in 1980 and 1990 and 2000 and 2010 and 2012 and 2019 are continued to be allowed to have a public platform to say whatever the fuck they want without opposition without anyone sitting across from them saying Everything you just said is bullshit, and you goddamn well know it. Why does your memory stop at 2015? How the hell do you think we got here? If there's no one allowed on the stage to say that, to to confront them with that information, then what you are seeing is a lie, a corporate lie being spread by every network because they the, the alternative is terrifying. The alternative is we have to replace these people. We have to actually shovel the shit out of our communication center and replace the serial liars who we all love and we're all related to and we're all fucking, you know, on the side. And and it's this incestuous inbred mm-hmm. clusterfuck of a media with people who actually tell us the truth and talk about grown up adult issues and grown up adult. Yeah. Ways. And that is the last thing networks want to do. Cause you know, who talked about grown up adult issues and grown up adult ways, Bob Mueller, but he's boring. He's boring. Let's have, we want shouty crackers, lunatics like Laura Ingram mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and shouty crackers, lunatics, like, like, uh, like a uh, Tucker Carlson. That's how we want the news to look. And we want some liberal version of that, some neutered, watered down liberal version of that way over on the other side. That's what media should look like. Well, except and, we have that. Yes, we do. I mean, I, I I hesitate to say this because it's not shouty crackers. It's serious right. commitment to truth and what we are as Americans. But uh-huh. we have dynamic people made for television people on the left we do we have aoc we have the squad they call themselves the squad Mm -hmm. uh impeach the motherfucker already and you know Maisie hirono saying bullshit you know we have people doing that Mm -hmm. uh when those people 
appear and would meet the Chuck Todd standard for being mm -hmm. optically appropriate for television. Right. Uh, they're not because they're not the right color. They're not the right uh, gender. And uh, what, what they, what they want is the magic hippie, right? <laughs> right. Not the magic Negro, which was what right. it, all the pressure that Barack Obama was supposed to be under to be perfect. There this was is a magic the magic Christian. hippie yes. who's not going yeah. to challenge their tax cuts, not going to challenge no. our advertisers, not mm -hmm. going to challenge capitalism, but right. uh, will be good for TV and good for right. ratings. And uh, you're not going to get that combination, folks. It doesn't happen because the people on the left are working toward a better America. Yeah. Um, I want to talk for a minute about what Bill Weld said to the NAACP this week. I don't know if you knew this, Drift Glass, but... Uh, Donald Trump was invited to speak before the NAACP, and he said no. Oh, really? Yeah, that, again. <laughs> disappointing. Second time, second uh, election that he's done that. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill Weld went to the NAACP meeting, as many other Republican candidates for president have done before. Yes, they have. Romney went. McCain went. It It is something that you, you're not expecting a lot, but you go, Okay. And uh, <laughs> Bill Weld just said, good morning, everybody. My name is Bill Weld, and I'm running against Donald Trump in the Republican primaries. So let's get one thing out of the way right at the beginning. Donald Trump is a raging racist, okay? <laughs> <laughs> now, Bill Weld is older than Donald Trump. I did he not is. realize that. Then he talked uh, with Lawrence O'Donnell that night about the, the future of the Republican Party. Uh -huh. And he said, and and I think the only thing I, first of all, I would never vote for Bill Weld because Bill Weld is a li is a truly a libertarian. Yes, he is. And uh, I don't believe in libertarianism, so that's no. not going to happen. Uh, I admire Bill Weld for yes, primarying exactly. Donald Trump and standing up to his own party. And, and he's and an honorable day. man. And he's, an, he's, he worked with Robert Mueller. He was Robert yeah. Mueller's boss and he was a mm -hmm. federal prosecutor. And he also, uh, when he ran as a libertarian in 2016, uh, made it very clear to anyone who would listen to him that there was no case against Hillary Clinton. Right. And he said, I'm saying this as a federal prosecutor. There is no case against Hillary Clinton. Just yeah. stop it. There's mm -hmm. no uh, you will never convince a prosecutor right. that she had uh, any intent to uh, defraud the government or defraud the voters or in any way. You know, she was a victim. Her emails were stolen from her, and uh, there's no case there. There's just right. so she was. He was very honest about that, mm -hmm. and now he's being very honest with this party. The only thing I disagree with him about in the statement that I'm going to read is what I mean is the ship has sailed. That's what I really right. want to say right. to yes. Bill Weld. You know, nice try. Your ship has sailed. He said, if the, if the Republican Party doesn't distance itself from the unbelievable racism of, Don, of President Trump, it is going to be stigmatized throughout the country as the party of racism. Again, mm -hmm. ship sail. Yeah. Long ago. Long and ago. And they are not going to be a national party anymore. Mm -hmm. They may be able to win Dixiecrat states from 1948 and that George Wallace won in 1968. But as a national party, not so much. That's a message I want to deliver to Republicans. Mm -hmm. And I would argue with him that if Democrats win the White House and there is a, an attorney general who gets serious about voter fraud and gerrymandering right. and the voters get serious about voter fraud and gerrymandering, mm -hmm. un undoing the voter fraud laws, quote unquote, yeah, that the voter suppression, suppression laws that suppress right. the vote. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't I see Georgia turning blue. Yeah, not Alabama, but I see Georgia turning blue. Maybe so, Texas. Yeah, maybe Texas. Right. Exactly. And if you get to the point where and, and don't forget that a great many Puerto Ricans moved to Florida and registered to vote after the hurricane. Yes, they did. Uh, if you get to the point where Florida, California and Texas are all you need to win the presidency and they're all mm -hmm. blue. Yep. Uh, you know. And New York. New York. And New well, and and the obvious states that are right. blue no matter what, right? right? California is one of those. But Illinois. 
Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Illinois, which is the one of the states that was actually named. They did name check Illinois as one of the states that Russia got our voter records. So yeah. Oh no, hey there, Vladimir, just... how you doing? I'm hey, on your Vlad. voter rolls. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, Who is I, I. P. Freely? Oh, I voted for him in '83. Uh, it was a thing. That was a, a write-in. Don't worry about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, John Havican. Remember him? He was great. <laughs> oh, all right. So uh, I admire Bill Weld for primarying Donald Trump. I hope yeah. he gets twenty percent in New Hampshire and shakes mm-hmm. things up that way. Uh, but I think the ship has sailed as far as the Republican Party being the Republican, the party of racism. We kind of got that. Yeah. I have asked for many weeks now of all the never Trumpers who blocked me for asking mm-hmm. questions like this. Why don't you just go back Bill Weld? Yeah, right. You all proclaim yourself to be such prophets and media geniuses right. and electoral wizards. Right. Why don't you just go and win some primaries for good old Bill Weld? He's running as a Republican. Yeah. He's primarying Donald Trump. He's on the ballot in New Hampshire. And he he represents the imaginary Republican Party that you keep insisting exists. He does. The well-educated cocktail party. Right. Uh, liberal on abortion. Not trying right. to not trying to stomp on women. Uh, well-spoken. Harvard-educated mm-hmm. lawyer. Cigars in the in the men's club. Right. Republican Party. He represents so not, all Brahmin Republican Party. Absolutely. And if, if you can bring this mighty electoral genius to bear <laughs> on the Democratic Party so heavily yeah. that without your genius, we will never win. Right. Without Rick Wilson's you know, limitless electoral wizardry, there's no chance for a Democrat to win anything anywhere in, in 2020. Well, why don't you just take that wizardry and, and march on down the right. Weld office? Right. And he's, he's everything you say you want. He's in your party. He is opposing all the things you oppose. And now the only possible answer as to why you won't do that is you either uh, you're greedy and they're not going to pay you right, the right, enormous right. amounts of money that right. you would be paid to work on his campaign. Or you know for a fact that everything liberals have said about the GOP is 100 percent true. Mm-hmm. And you've known it for years and you were perfectly OK um, poking racists with a sharp stick and getting them to the polls uh, as long as. As they were, the checks were clearing. As long as they weren't saying the the quiet part out loud, you were perfectly okay with riling up the bigots and the lunatics and getting them to the polls to get horrible people elected. You never had a problem with that, which means you don't have a conscience, which means you will do anything for money. And now that the monster you helped create has eaten your party, you want to cut in line in at my party and start telling us how to run things. Well, look, dude, if you're that again, if you're that fucking smart. Go work for Bill Weld. Mm-hmm. I'm sure he'd welcome the assistance. And if you if you won't work for him, maybe one day you'll answer the question why. Right. And that what really depresses me, Blue Gal, is that no one's going to ask that question. Yeah. Yeah. Because the people that they hang out with, the liberals they like and trust, they like and trust on the basis of knowing that they're never going to be asked a hard question. It's like David Brooks. David Brooks only goes places where he knows people are not going to ask him well, about his shitty, people are shitty. Going to read writer. his column back to him, right? right. <laughs> hey, one other thing that Bill Weld said that I did find fascinating: he spoke mm-hmm. to Lawrence as a former prosecutor and as Robert Mueller's former boss, uh, and he said, "If I'd had that, that case, if I had been in charge of the Mueller investigation, I would have charged mm-hmm. the president." Yeah. I would have indicted yeah. him and I would the indictments would be sealed so that they couldn't be you know politicized in that way and mm-hmm. he said these OLC opinions let me read this part um these office of legal counsel opinions that one's pointing to are not like a judicial opinion with the same force of law to cite that office of legal counsel opinion that's the basis for not indicting the president i think you could have charged him suspended and sealed the indictment so the statute of limitations would not run out and I would have if it was the case. So fascinating stuff. Yeah. But my question is, look, if if what you're saying is literally true, if if the uh, OLC opinion uh, over, overrides every constitutional protection we have in this country other than impeachment mm-hmm. and the 25th Amendment, which was never going to happen, um, then what you are saying is quite literally what you're saying is that Donald Trump could go up on the Truman balcony, set up a sniper's nest and start shooting at tourists. Mm hmm. And and there's no one who's authorized to stop him, and there's no one who could charge him with a crime. And he could do that all day long because the Secret Service won't let anyone get near the president, 
and no one's allowed to charge him with a crime. Now, is that true? And I have a weird feeling it is. I have an absolutely creepy feeling that, yep, you're right. The president can literally get away Mm -hmm. with murder. And the only way he's ever going to be charged is once he leaves office. And that cannot be what the founders of this country intended. It simply can't be true. Um, And yet that is clearly what Bob Mueller believes uh, the controlling legal authority says about his the extent of his ability to right. to enforce the law and that really should deeply disturb everyone out there I, I did promise someone on the twitter that i would uh call david brooks a lot of names to this week. i want to give you five minutes to talk about david brooks go uh, well david brooks is just horrible he did a horrible column and wrote about that and you can see the link but what i really want to talk about is David Brooks, who could not handle doing prep work at a kitty's lemonade stand, yeah, decided he he this week squeeze those lemons or no. that lemonade powder and stir it, right? You want <laughs> wait, you want all the lemon cut? I don't want to cut them all. <laughs> this is a guy who, who really, as far as I can tell, his entire adult life, he's never had any job other than writing shitty conservative opinions for magazines that overpaid him for doing that. He's mm-hmm. never had an honest job doing anything, as far as I can tell, ever. And so, and he's lived in a bubble of completely elite deferential privilege his whole life. So uh, now he's decided this week to take a firm stand against the insincerity of waiters who would, <laughs> who would like him to tip them for their services. Um, this confirms my theory that uh, no one reads anything. No one reads Dave, actually reads David Brooks because Mr. Brooks got dragged harder over this one tweet, which is, quote, waiters are 87% friendlier as they hand me the bill and I'm about to decide on the tip amount than they are at any other point in the meal. He got dragged harder for that than all the other horrid shit he has written for the New York Times over the last 14 years. I'm not yeah, kidding. Because he said it on Twitter. He said it on Twitter. And That's it why. confirms my yeah. opinion that nobody reads anything. Um, yeah. Now, the responses were were lovely, as you can tell. I'll just read a few of them. I'm not a waiter, but I will be spitting in your, po- in your food from now on. You. <laughs> hey, maybe you're just an asshole. I used to pump gas. Go fuck yourself. Oh my goodness, did you really say this in a public space? Be grateful you aren't paid in tri- tips for your writing. Uh, pro tip, he is paid in tips. Uh, he's paid enormously uh, by the New York Times, far in excess of what his market value is worth. Uh, and, and tips for those service include a regular gig, gig on NPR, a regular gig on PBS, his own column, whatever he wants it. No, he just, people just throw bags of money at him. Uh, quote, oh, look, it's Mr. Fancy Sandwich, who loves to have his ass kissed. Yes, that is the reaction of every waiter, every place he ever goes in. Quote, you get paid an obscene amount to crank out lazy pros, and you're mocking people who spend countless hours on their feet dealing with jerks like you for sub-minimum wage. That's just about right. But the last one really kind of was funny and sad. Uh, get your laughs now, folks, because David Brooks is probably going to use his next column at the nation's most prominent newspaper to discuss your mean tweets. And I bet that's true. Wow. So, yeah. Now, yeah. And this week in white male privilege, uh, <laughs> David Brooks is topped only and Chuck, that was topped only by Kevin Williamson. Well, and isn't this the on the show that uh, Joe Scarborough is wants God to forgive him for being yes. a Republican? Yes. Yeah? And no, Joe. And so he has Kevin Williamson on who wants women to be hung for having an abortion. Yes. He thought women yeah. should be executed. And and this is the this is just so perfect. This is and he's one of a parade of conservative writers who, and I believe Joe referred to him as one of the greatest writers ever or of his generation. He's just, it was full of soft soap and praise. Um, but he was going, he was on the morning Joe TV show, which you and I will never be on. To pimping compl- a new book. Pimping a new book uh, called. It's called the smallest minority independent thinking in the age of mob politics. Right. Published by who? By Blue Regnery Gal? Press. I've heard of them. Do they publish other people like Ann Coulter? Yes, they do. Ann That's Coulter, pretty much yes, all they, they publish. Do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you have any quotes here. I stole the title from Ayn Rand. I stole it because she didn't deserve it. Is that right? She doesn't deserve it. That is yeah. the opening line of his book. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fuck you. Uh, this is. This is a guy who got himself fired from The Atlantic because they didn't bother to check his past at all or anything he'd ever written. Imagine this level of privilege. You go on one of the top-rated morning cable shows to complain that the liberal mob has silenced you. It's silencing you while you're sitting on the Morning Joe show. Again, not since 
Glenn Greenwald used to go from network to network to network complaining that no one would give him a platform for his opinion. Has someone reeked this hard of absolute privilege? It is his God-given right, apparently, to have a column in the Atlantic magazine. Yeah. And when someone pointed out to the editors of the Atlantic magazine shit that Kevin Williams had actually written, and they said, holy crap, what have we done? And asked him to leave. That's when I'm sure he started on his next book about how the the mob, the mob mm-hmm. politics, the mob has turned on me, a righteous and noble Christian man who just happens to think women were put on this earth to produce babies. And if they have an abortion, they should be executed. Right. And right. I agree that he should have uh, all the platforms in the world that he wants for his opinion as long uh, from the consent of the people who own and operate them because they're all private property. I also believe that people who own and operate those platforms should allow other voices on the air who might disagree with Kevin Williamson. And what I've noticed on Morning Joe is that he never put people like me or like you or like Digby or like any of us on the air to call Kevin Williamson the racist asshole that he is. And he's just an asshole. I mean, racism, sexism, all, Mm -hmm. all the crap that he does. His book is written... I'm an asshole. I can say whatever I want. This is right. my book. Right. So, and and that's his shtick is to right. be an asshole. And you're supposed to, oh my gosh, look what he said. Uh, and it is uh, Ann Coulter syndrome. You know, he's going to say outrageous shit to get uh-huh. attention and people are going to gasp and secretly agree with him. You know, mm-hmm. all my critics secretly agree with me is the other meme that goes through Kevin Williamson's writing. And, and, yeah. and the difference is, first of all, it's a very crowded market. <laughs> it is. Uh, secondly, <laughs> I, I, I stand in the front lawn in my underwear saying outrageous things all the time, but nobody <laughs> offers to pay me to do it, Blue Gal. Nobody drives by with a van saying, you know what? That guy needs a book contract. We need to sign him up right away. And Morning Joe and MSNBC need to be held accountable it, in whatever way we can hold them accountable. If that means screaming on Twitter, so be it, mm-hmm. that they had him on. You know, it, it, they they are a privately owned company. They can have people on they want. They will also be held accountable by their audience for doing that. Well, and I have a new uh, hashtag I'm floating, if you don't mind. Sure. It's NRE. Okay. Uh, it stands for No Reply Expected. <laughs> um, because, yeah, I believe that. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it is the, the story it, of your life. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, it's the story of Twitter. Yeah, uh, Twitter yeah, is supposed yeah. to be a democratizing, you know, public yeah. square. Everyone has a voice, yeah. et cetera. Except it's a place where elites go to talk to other elites and tell the rest of us to shut up. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, if you want to talk to each other, look, if 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 you, Joe Scarborough, and, and you, I don't know, Bill Crystal, want to have a conversation that you don't want the public to intrude on, that's what email is for, asshole. You know, if yeah. you're going to stand in a public square and have a conversation about this shit, expect people to weigh in because that's what this is. And it has become absolutely common practice that anyone above a certain level with a blue check simply does not acknowledge anyone else exists. They right. talk down to everyone else and they talk only to each other. And I still stick my foot in the middle of conversations and I'm absolutely not welcome there. And occasionally I'm told to leave and block I'm like, well, dude, then don't talk. This is the, this is the using your cell phone in public syndrome. Right. You right, know, yep, if you want, yep. this is not your fucking payphone. This is a restaurant. If you want to talk to someone, go to a private place and talk to them. But this is a public place. And so I have noticed over the many, many years where I have made many thousands of comments um, with like two exceptions, um, people who operate at the level of media that have any control over um, the message, even on the left, do not respond to people below them at yeah. all ever 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 and will will block you if you are persistent in asking the same question even if you don't swear even if you're not an asshole they simply don't want to answer certain questions and you know what those are the most vital and interesting questions are those are the ones that require the most um urgent answers and so I, the example i used to use was when rachel maddow would rage about paul wolfowitz's career being rehabilitated mm-hmm the question was, well, why don't you go down the hall and ask why Bill Crystal works here? Yeah, yeah. And the answer is, I don't want to have to answer that question because the answer to that question means I don't, I don't get to work here anymore. And she loves working here and she does a great job. So and she does. So she is trading off. She is. I mean, I'm not make, I'm not being angry at Rachel Maddow because not at all. But she understands is... the position she's in. Right. But And that's that's one example of a few with, with someone like that. But 
when you get down to the Joe Scarborough level or the Andrea Mitchell level, mm -hmm. the degree to which they are willing to just put horrible people on television. Yeah. Different platforms and never ask them any questions. It's like, okay, I can understand a, a small trade off in exchange for this, but you guys just are un completely unprincipled and you get away with it every day because no one ever pushes you on it because you own the camera. Right. And that's the part of the dynamic that will lead us to the next great rebranding. Because once we start pretending the Republicans are Republicans and Donald Trump's really a Democrat and you know what, it's it just the fringe and it was just his supporters and supporters are different than voters and we're not all racist here and a bunch of us write, you know, about Donald Trump and we never, ever encouraged him. Once that is permitted to be the public message, the beltway, common wisdom, game over. Right. That's, game over. Then, then you're, in your, you're safely in your lifeboat floating away. Right. And the important part is that allows for another Donald Trump to be elected Absol president. And, and worse. that's the point. And worse. It'll, it'll be and worse. Josh Hawley and Tom Cotton next right. time. Right. Not Donald Trump. President and then Tom Cotton. And then we're done. And yeah. then we're done. Yeah. And, and the yeah. same people will be saying, I have no idea how this happened. Yeah. I have no yeah. idea how this happened. I have no idea. I no, played no part I'm so in this. I'm sorry. I, I'm a Republican. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Maybe it was, yeah. maybe it was all, and this was the new one this week. Maybe it was all the excesses of the liberals, the Democrats. Uh -huh. that yeah. Drove you know, us. Too, too excess. We were too excessive. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. excessively what? Electing black people. Yeah. I, yes. <laughs> you know, well, yeah. that's absolutely. basically it. Yeah. reaction to that. Yep. Hey, we got to do news roundup. Well, in case you're just tuning in, a Republican complained to Bob Mueller that he didn't cite Fox News in his report. However, Devin Nunes did quote Sean Hannity word for word for his, uh, in his remarks. Kudos to Ken Buck, Republican Colorado. Yes, Trump can be indicted after he leaves office. And Deb Lesko, Republican of Arizona, uh, why didn't you cite Fox News? Yeah, because yeah. Fox News Those, is that, the That's the brain trust of the Republican Party walking right into a rake. I yeah, those are the smart ones. Yeah, yeah. Those are the, those are the ones who are who are twice as smart as Louis Gohmert. The Trump mm -hmm. administration is moving to end food stamps for 3 million people, which Speaker Pelosi has called an act of staggering callousness. She's right. Yeah. And and compare that to uh, back in Trump country where we live, the welfare for Trump voters is flowing like wine in the form of agricultural subsidies. The U.S. government will pay American farmers hurt by the trade war with China between $15 and $150 per acre in an aid package totaling $16 billion. Uh, most of the benefits will be going to farmers in the South. The assistance, which will start in mid-late August, which is next month, is in addition to Republican President Donald Trump's previous $12 billion aid package last year that was aimed at making up for lower farm good prices and lost sales. In the new aid package, the U.S. Department of Agriculture said it would pay farmers according to geographic location rather than by crop. I wonder why. Dramatic. I wonder why. You know, these these farmer, Republican welfare farmers yeah. are wrecking this country. <laughs> you know, how am I going to teach my stepkids the value of a dollar when you have these lazy welfare farmers In the collecting South. a big fat paycheck? Oh, yeah. Sitting on their porch collecting a paycheck for doing nothing uh -huh. because Donald Trump decided he wanted to piss off China. By geographic location. Him. They're going to yeah. pay welfare by geographic location. That is unbelievable. Yeah. As they move to cut people off food from stamps. actual food yep. stamps. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mitch McConnell made coal miners bust themselves to D.C. just to screw them over. Yeah. What an asshole. Uh, Ma and I'll give Joe Scarborough credit for this. Moscow Mitch. Yep, Moscow Mitch. Yeah. Moscow Mitch. And his Republican henchmen have also blocked two separate election security bills, despite Bob Mueller's warning that Russia is interfering, quote, as we sit here. This is the fourth time they've done this. They want Russia to fuck with our elections. Yeah, That's it helps how big them. a traitor to this yep. country Mitch McConnell is. And if you're a Republican in Kentucky and you vote for Mitch McConnell, you're a traitor. a traitor and you you're going to have to live with that for the rest of your lives expect us to never forget that you betrayed this country and put this asshole back in power this week donald trump who's gotten a ton of cash from the saudis to keep his businesses from going under not to mention all the hotel rooms in washington dc they rent all the time mm -hmm. vetoed bipartisan bills to stop selling the saudis dangerous arms and weapons and mm -hmm basically told the family of Jamal Khashoggi to go fuck themselves. Yeah. 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 Money rules my world. Uh, the New York Times has once again dispatched the Zeitgeist action van 
to the interior of the continent to interview Trump oh, voters because you know <laughs> they they love doing that. That that magic ruralism is is still a very well paying genre. Uh, quote: These Michigan voters show how Trump's go back attack may help him, Blue Guy. You know, yeah. With all the both sides disagree. <laughs> with all the with all those independents who are on the fence, right? Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm 82 and I'm an independent. No, you're not. You have a tattoo of Dick Cheney on your balls. Mm-hmm. What are you mm-hmm. talking about? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I just if you just stop tweeting and just make them go back to where they came from, yeah. dude. They came from Minnesota. Yeah. So, you know, but this is this is what passes for news. Let's go let's go talk to Trump voters about why they vote for Trump. Let's go talk to them about why they're racist. Not why yeah. they're racist, just that their Trump's racism may help him with these voters. Yeah, everyone's a pundit and now. The, if you if this week didn't convince you that the media is broken, yeah. Nothing will. Okay. Speaking yeah. of that, uh Fox News decided to have uh-huh. Ken Starr on. Is color commentary. And he said yeah. that Robert Mueller has done a grave disservice to our country. Fuck you. I, I don't Ken even know Stark. what to say about that. Fuck uh, you. That's what you say. You know what? Uh, this liberal has now been owned um, officially. <laughs> uh, they have now owned me. I, I, my liberal tears are flowing now. I, 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 if this is Ken Starr should be living under an assumed name in a South American mm-hmm, country mm-hmm. at this point. Uh, but he's not because we don't do things like that through Republicans in this country. All I can say is, Ken, there's a lovely program called Hello Fascist that you better be investing in because mark my words, there's going to be a distinct bitter aftertaste <laughs> to whatever you're eating from now on. And it's not going to be from from the extra ingredient that Pedro put in your in your uh, in your tiramisu. Um, yes, it will. I'm sorry. I got off on a little That's tangent okay. there. Apple, uh, according to Donald Trump. Apple will not be given tariff waivers, uh, Donald Trump tweeted from his iPhone, which I thought was just uh, glorious in every way. Mm-hmm. The Justice Department will resume executing prisoners awaiting the death penalty for the first time in 16 years because Bill Barr wants to yeah. do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they like killing people and they're not able to kill them fast enough. And you know what? If you can run a campaign on killing those, on those monsters behind bars. Yeah, and on inhumanity. State. Sure. They're, they're winning the inhumanity yeah. vote. Sure. Uh, we're giving them what they deserve. And that's, you know, this is, this is who these guys want in office. Uh, active duty military personnel are now stationed inside border patrol facilities near the border, just a few feet away from the migrant adults and children they're supposed to be watching. Trump, his company, and three of his children must face part of a lawsuit alleging they used their family name to scam people into joining a multi-level marketing scheme. Yeah, this is like the 17th tier of corruption. (laughs) The entire... uh, Donald Trump has picked serial plagiarist and birther conspiracy monger Monica Crowley uh, for Assistant Treasury Secretary for Public Affairs. Monica Crowley. Plagiarized do a whole PhD show on Monica thesis, Crowley. Monica Crowley. Yep. 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 And and just hopped on that Kenyan usurper, wasn't born uh-huh. here, a horse uh-huh. and rode it into yep. the ground. And again, she should be someone living under an assumed name with Ken Starr <laughs> somewhere in Venezuela. And she's not. <laughs> now she's going to be the Assistant Treasury Secretary for Public Affairs. Trump is on track to add another trillion dollars to the national deficit Man. this year. Not just his golf game. Yeah. I feel really, really sorry for that next president. I really do. (laughs) Man, I wonder where this trillion dollar deficit came from. No one knows. It just showed up one day like a little baby. It just showed up. And it's all your fault. It's all your fault. You know what? (laughs) Why why won't Obama lead, Blue Gal? Why won't Obama 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 lead? lead? Uh, And in local news, um, explain to me about the strip club tax kerfuffle. Oh, yeah. Uh, It's it's, it's just a funny local story. There's a we have a local strip club. Called Deja Vu. Deja Vu, about which I know nothing. Uh, <laughs> I know they have an amateur night. Yes. Yes, they I've do. I've never they have, been. <laughs> I, well, I'll take you sometime, Blue Gal. No, um, you won't. No, no. It's, uh, it's a locally owned business. I do know that. Yes, uh, They employ it people. I do know that. I know where they get their costumes. I actually know the, the former owner of the, of the bridal dress shop where they used to get their costumes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because it takes special talent to sew does. little pieces of fabric together like well, that. Well, yeah. reinforce zippers that, that have to come down fast and efficiently and never never snag. And I know that the sales of certain types of wine and champagne go up when guest strippers come in from out of town. This is wow. what you get when you know local business owners, Blue Girl. You get the inside right. story. And that's, your, that's part of your career is you knowing Indeed. local business owners. Sure, sure. Um, but apparently there was some sort of tax screw up 
that the uh, assessor said was our, our mistake uh, that oh. resulted in them having a much, 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 much lower tax bill than uh, they should have, uh, which made the front page of the paper for some reason, because we yeah, have a the strip club tax kerfuffle. Yes. 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 And I, I made a, a crude joke about a poll tax and my wife oh. looked at me with that look that says, <laughs> don't ever do that again. Don't I ever roll. do that again. I roll. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hey, what's that in your food, Drift Glass? Oh, yeah, okay. See, okay. Never mind. Hey, each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Charlie. Charlie is another hairless cat wonder, and he loves to pose. He will pose for a photo. He will pose for a sculpture. He will pose so that you can be inspired by his grace and elegance as a gift from him to you. Mm-hmm. Vanity schmanity, he's just being honest. So go and visit Charlie. He is posing on our Facebook page and website. And you know, Charlie only eats freshly poured cat food. Whether you buy Pet Store Perfection or Dollar Store Dreck, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the cat food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly You can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, or you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. We have gotten so many nice notes from people. I got some very funny birthday cards. It's still July. It's not too late to send a little note like this one from Steven that we got in the P.O. Box today. You went you went to the P.O. Box today, Drickland. I did. I sure did. Yeah. Um, and and I love this letter because it's short. And to the point, and I, I want people to realize you don't have to do a perfectly long letter about how much you love us. You can just say hi. In fact, one letter we got with a $5 bill said here. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. <laughs> kind of perfect. Here. <laughs> yes. But Stephen wrote to us this week and said, hi, guys. I found your show about a year ago, and it quickly became one of my favorites. It's part of my Saturday ritual as I work on my old house. Kudos for staying after those both siders and asshole Republicans. Keep up the good work and thanks so much, Stephen. So we appreciate that, Stephen, and we appreciate all of you writing us and thank you for the birthday cards and thank you uh, for your contributions. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based iced or hot beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is a labor of love and our job. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. We've got PayPal, postal address information, both sides don't, bumper stickers, other kinds of swag, Mm -hmm. and uh, everything else. It's all there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media. And thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties think we should change the name of our fake sponsor from Hello Fascist to Freshly Peed. Freshly Peed. Freshly Peed. Oh, my Lord, it's Freshly Peed. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whine and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGB.